Hi, this is Swan from Swan Amity Studios, and we are putting together the pinwheel at the center of our Star in the West star. This is part of the beginning of the program, so we haven't done a whole lot of pressing together yet, and there's more than one different way to press the center of your star. In this case, we're working with four units, and you can see I've started to put them together. So each one is what we call a combo block using half of a quarter square triangle unit attached to half of a half square triangle unit. And that's why we call it a combo block, quarter square triangle with half square triangle, combining the two. Uh, of course, sounds obvious, right? But now let's go ahead and finish putting it together and take a look at how we would do the final pressing. Up to this point, we've pressed towards the dark and towards the dark, meaning that the two of these seams will now line up beautifully to come together. Let's go ahead and pin. And because I'm using a seam guide, I pin a little differently than some other people might choose to pin. It's not really a traditional method, but I start always when I'm bringing two seams together by giving them kind of a little push with my thumb so they're really tightly bound together as that center pinwheel comes together and I've pinned right in the seam. I'm going to put my next pin out here at the edge making sure that one raw edge of the top section comes together really beautifully with the raw edge of the bottom section and then I'm going to put two pins kind of in that intermediary space and making sure that the, the edges line up really well. And then I'm going to come out to the other side and pin once again lining up those raw edge with raw edge. I know how I squared my blocks so I want to make sure everything lines up really well. And then I'm going to pin in that intermediary space as well. I have a little extra here and I can feel that so I'm actually going to put just a t one more pin in there to make sure that it flattens out and evens out as it goes through the machine. So for those of you who are newer to piecing, those instances in which you have just a little more on one side than you do on the other side and it feels like they won't line up perfectly, if you can put the side that has slightly more fabric in it down to the feed dogs, that is going to allow the feed dogs to kind of soak up some of the additional fabric and it will make the project look flatter in general. So anytime you can make that choice, that's the best choice for those types of situations. It seems like a mistake, but it won't look like a mistake after it goes through the machine. So we've pinned in the intersection, we've pinned on both ends, and we've pinned in our interim space. And now we're ready to go into the machine. I have my starter in the machine. I'm going to go ahead and go right through. And using my stiletto to make sure that that connection happens really beautifully at the center of the pinwheel. You notice I slow down there too and I go through that additional bulk just a little more slowly to make sure that the connections are really happening the way that they should. Let's throw another little ender in there and let's unpin and see what we have. I never want to set the seam until I'm sure that I've stitched appropriately. And here you can see part of what we're looking for is that connection to happen right there. If this line of stitching and this line of stitching are coming up to a point, I want the cross stitching of that new seam to line up right on the edge of that point. That's a good indication we did our job. And if we flip it over, we can see that we also made that alignment on the other side. 
well done. That's what we're aiming for. If we open it up, that means that we should see all of the points in the center of our pinwheel lined up well and intact. So anytime that you hear from a judge or from um, another quilter or an instructor that um, the points are clipped or the points are cut off, that's an indication that you sewed that last seam a little too fat and you won't see all of your points looking really pretty. You'll see them kind of disappearing um, or like they said, clipped or cut off. Uh, this is what we're aiming for. We want to see all of those points at the center. We want to see all of those points at the outside edge as well. Now I'm going to bring a pressing mat over here um, under the camera so we can take a look at what we would do about pressing this. Because now if we press just one direction, say that we just press this direction, the problem with that is we end up with a lot of bulk on this side of the seam where all of the excess material is, especially right at that center where my points are. I want those points to look really nice. And if I go to quilt it later and there's this big ball of fabric there, it's gonna be less comfortable. So what I wanna do is treat this like I would a four patch. I wanna to come to the back and right there at the center, I wanna just break the thread and pull that apart. Just like I would if I were trying to press a four patch really flat. And if you've watched one of my four patch videos in the past, you know what we're about to do. Um, I put my finger in that while I flip it over so that when I lay it down, I can put that exactly the way that I just broke the seam in the back. And that means that I'm gonna press in this direction and then I'm gonna press in this direction. Notice that that means that I will have pressed towards the dark all the way around, kind of in a whirling pattern. Let's move that just a little bit away from the machine and bring our iron over here. Here's where I already pressed, and I'm gonna use the iron now to whirl into the new pressing, and I'm gonna keep coming around and last little seam, we press that one out nice and flat. We're gonna get a really beautiful interior in this one now. Um, and what I've gotten really excited about with these wool mats to press on is that they kind of push the seam down into the mat. And if you could feel the mat right now, I can tell you that like I can feel a little bit of where the seam was. But what it does is really allow me to press something really flat and perfectly. So um, I especially like that when I've got a lot of bulk towards the center of what I'm pressing. Here is the center of your star in the west star. And that beautiful pinwheel now has all of its points intact. It looks really nice. We pressed it just like we would a four patch. So if we're looking at it from the back side, you can see all of those seams now press in the same direction. They look great. I'm gonna clean that one up just a little bit before I move that into the final piecing. And you can see our pinwheeling effect at the center from having broken that last edge so that we could make that center as flat as possible. This is Swan with Swan Amity Studios. If you are currently doing the Star in the West program, wherever you are doing it, uh, either with your local shop or your guild or with me. I hope that you are enjoying and I hope that you are also stitching happy. Thank you so much.